Welcome to Waku's Kitchen. Today it's going to be a very, very, very fun episode because I'm not alone. Thank you, God. I'm here together with Alexander Gersberg. He is, well, not only a very nice person, also leading when it comes to plant-based foods, experimenting, even making amazing cookbooks like this. And I can tell you, he gave me one. It's truly beautiful, way ahead of its time, and he's here to cook with us today. Alexander, welcome and thank you for being here. Nice to be here. Um, yes, yeah, so my name is Alexander. I was born in Russia, grew up in Israel. I live 15 years in the Netherlands. I speak some Dutch, but we will do it in English. It's a bit yeah, easier for not? today. And I'm going to cook uh, a dish from the new book, which is quite easy and quick. I think you can all pretty easily make it at home. It's like um, stir fry with uh, seaweed, broccoli and tomatoes. And the reason I wanted to do it is because I wanted people to get a little bit more acquainted with seaweed, which most people find like a really yeah. weird ingredient. Uh, but actually it's really healthy, really good for your body. It's very rich on calcium, uh, iron, a lot of minerals and vitamins. And in general, this whole dish will be very rich on calcium, iron, vitamins. It also has, you have it in broccoli, or this is like broccoletti, baby. Yeah. Uh, I will also use tahini. Tahini is... Um, uh, Middle Eastern uh, sesame paste, you could say. It's a little bit like peanut butter, but then from sesame, from roasted it sesame. Uh, so this dish will combine some Japanese uh, style of ingredients like the wakame, which is the seaweed that I'm going to use, and, um, and like tahini, and this is kind of typical of how I cook like with Japanese and Israeli flavors. So Alexander, you brought your amazing book, you got your apron on, you brought your smile. What are we gonna make today? Tell me. So we're gonna make a dish from the chapter seaweed in my cookbook. Okay. Uh, we're gonna make a stir fry with wakame, tomatoes and uh, tahini. All right. So wakame is a Japanese kind of seaweed. It comes in an instant form and I'm gonna soak it before I'm making it. So it's basically dried seaweed in this case? Yeah, yeah, dried seaweed. If you want me to lay back and do nothing, just let me know because you know I'll be the first one to relax a bit. So. Tell me, what are we going to start with? So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take wakame, which is the seaweed I showed you before, and I'm going to soak it. So the wakame was soaking for about 2-3 minutes, and it became softer. You can see it becoming more flexible, you can use it for a salad. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to strain the water out of the wakame, and I'm going to squeeze the water out of the wakame. Don't do it with too much rubbing, otherwise it becomes, the wakame can become a little bit soggy. So I do it just against the walls of the strainer. Alrighty, so next thing I'm doing is to roast some pine nuts. So I just really like to use pine nuts for every stir fry or pilaf dish. You can use any other nuts. Now when you stir pine nuts, you should be careful not to burn them because they burn very easily. So just keep on adjusting the fire so it's not too high and keep on stirring constantly. I see people leaving the pine nuts in the pan and just let them roast like this. They burn in no time. So next thing we're going to do is to cut some vegetables for the stir fry. Very easy, just in big chunks. Uh, today I'm using, you can improvise with any kinds of green vegetables. Today I'm using pak choy and uh, bimi or broccoletti, depends how you know it. It's like small broccoli you can use. In the recipe I put real broccoli and um, uh, just spinach, but you can use like um, turnip greens of chard or anything else, just improvise with the greens that you find. And uh, Jen is roasting the pine nuts. And, All day, uh, baby. Keep some roasting, don't burn yes, them. Yes, <laughs> yes, and keep on moving them, I remember, I remember. Yeah. I see some people are just leaving the pine nuts in the pan and uh, burning them, so we're not going to do that. Okay. okay, I've never stirred so much in my life. Okay. I think Bob Marley would be very uh, proud great, of me. Great, great, great. It looks very, very good. Why yes. Bob Marley? Stir it up. Oh, good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, it's a classic. Can Listen. I take it out? Yes, please. In a bowl? And that's another thing, take it out immediately after it's but otherwise it continues to uh, roast. Okay, so I just told Alexander how I like to uh, crush my garlic and he said why don't you show me so I yeah. thought it might be a good idea I'm really curious what you're going to do yeah so first I peel it just like everybody I hope I just take the whole garlic clove and I just 
right. crunch the thing, and then I take fine salt. Never saw this, I swear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you put the fine salt on top so the garlic doesn't slip away, and you're using salt in your dish already, so it shouldn't be a big deal. And now what you want to do is just crush the garlic Ooh. while you move the knife backwards. So basically the weight wow. of the knife and the sharpness of it, you can see it already. Amazing. You make a paste out of this. And Amazing. the salt kind of makes sure that it all has a little bit of grip to the board. Look at that. And as you go further, it gets easier and more satisfying as well. Oh my God. You see? And now you can start. Jenna, I never saw this. <laughs> you can take it all the way back if you like. You just scrape it off your board. But this is really a cool technique. Yeah, and then you go again. This thing. Yeah. Never ever. Where did you learn this? Vermeer. When I was like 18 or something on the vegetables. You worked in Vermeer. Yeah, four You're years. So fancy. <laughs> I wish I was. I was just a chef yelling at me all day. Alrighty. So I'm just gonna put. Um, skillet pan on the fire or a wok pan whatever you have at home something wide and big which is nice to stir fry in or to fry in i'm gonna use now i'm using olive oil but in fact uh, in the recipe i say roasted sesame oil you can use any oil olive oil and roasted sesame oil will work really well I'm i gonna... forgot to order the sesame oil guys it's my it's right. i forgot to buy it <laughs> and i also my didn't fault, mention fault. that we have an induction here also he came right. in he saw it he said <laughs> i kind Jen, of became white when i saw it <laughs> there's no fire i said no this induction is 2022 yeah. and he said no i like cooking on fire and i said sorry but especially for me he stayed here cooking his dish on induction may the lord <laughs> bless you well uh by the way i'm checking if the oil is really hot uh, before I add something, so when you saute or when you stir fry something, you want to add the vegetables in hot oil. You want to hear the sound of sizzling, like tss, when you add the vegetable. So let's check with one. I added the broccoli. Not so much sizzling, right? So ideally, like Jen said, I love to cook on fire, real fire. Real fire gives a lot of energy to the body, energizes the body, and moves processes in the body. So you allow the broccoletti to stir fry for about one or two minutes. And please guys at home, make sure you hear the sizzling sound. This is what's really gonna make this stir fry exciting. You can't stir fry in cold oil. So I just added a little bit of water, which makes the vegetable just sizzle more. Yeah, we don't want to cook them. We still want to continue sizzle. Yeah. So after one, two, three minutes, you see that the Broccoletti starts to get a little bit of golden brown edges and becomes a little bit more flexible. We can add the tomatoes. And the order of adding, for me at least, is how long these vegetables take. So spinach, tomatoes and pak choy take very, very short um, to stir fry. Yeah. So I will add them in the same time. You're not scared of a full pan, are you? Yeah, it's a little bit too full, I agree with you, but well, they will, uh, so. they will uh, squeeze. <laughs> yeah, but when it comes to things so like tomatoes, okay. spinach, pak soy, yeah. they become small so quickly because of exactly. the heat. Before you know it, there's even like space left in the pan. So exactly. This yeah. shows that he knows what he is doing. Any okay. regular person <laughs> would be very scared at the moment, but this is going to fit okay. perfectly. Yeah. I'm adding the garlic. So when you make a stir fry, just... What I'm thinking about is like stir fry the vegetables up. I don't squeeze them down just to give it a little bit more fiery and uplifting energy. I hear you using the terms uplifting energy, right. fire in the energy. Yeah. Is there all those things you usually think about when you're cooking? The yeah. energy you put into food or? Yeah, definitely. So I also have background like in macrobiotics and Chinese traditional mm -hmm. medicine. And I look very much at what food does to us, how it influences the body. Yeah. Um, what it does to our emotions, to our behavior, uh, the way we think, that really inspires me when I cook. So for example, this dish is very uplifting, it gives a burst of energy, we use high fire in a short okay. time. Okay. Um, it stimulates the flow of the blood. I think like that also might be part of the reason why you say that uh, you like working on a fire, because yeah. they say that fire literally 
fires up the soul yeah. and what else they say ambition or something like this right the passion and the passion, passion yes passion, heart yes, like yes, you see okay yes. it's still induction but you see yeah the energy in the room is i can feel it <laughs> <laughs> so about two minutes for all the vegetables it's quite short i'm going to add a little bit of mirin so mirin is a japanese cooking wine it adds a sweet flavor to dishes yeah. so the vegetables become very tasty very sweet and i'm gonna add a little bit of shoyu so you show you is a naturally fermented soy sauce and you just give it like another minute of uh, stir not too long we don't want two vegetables to get brown we want them to be crispy and green and full of young energy okay so we squeeze the water out of the wakame you remember and now we are going to add a little bit of mirin so mirin is japanese cooking wine uh, it has a little bit of alcohol, it's a little bit like sake and it adds a sweet flavor into dishes. Then shoyu, naturally fermented soy sauce, will make it a bit salty and umami. Shoyu goes very well with seaweed, so it's also like the traditional flavoring of seaweed, the Japanese flavoring. And I'm going to add a little bit of lemon, um, fresh lemon juice, just going to squeeze it like this. Um, I would say not too much, but citrus works very, very, very well with seaweed. Um, and it makes sense because the vitamin C in citrus helps to absorb the minerals, the iron, the calcium. You just give it um, a quick stir and uh, you taste it. And at this point, it should be very tasty. This can already be um, used for any salad or uh, for any side dish. Alrighty, next thing, the wakame is ready. We're going to do the tahini. So tahini, like I said before, it's a paste made from sesame seeds. Uh, roasted sesame seeds. I like to buy tahini in Turkish stores. Um, there is one that I really like from Lebanon, actually. Um, and uh, many people use tahini just in its raw form without um, giving it any processing. But actually, in the Middle East, usually, uh, you would prepare tahini in this manner. So you will use the paste itself, the raw paste itself. Then I will add a little bit of lemon juice something like one teaspoon, one tablespoon. Uh, quite some salt, I would say, like half, half teaspoon, and a little bit of water to mix it. And then it becomes like a tahini sauce. It's much more pleasant to eat, much more sweet, much more creamy than the raw tahini itself, which can be harsh. Um, so with the, um, um, how it's called, whisk, harde in Dutch, um, you whisk it. And then you see that it kind of becomes like a thick cement. This we don't want to eat. So we keep on adding a little bit more water every time. But the trick with making tahini is that you should not add too much water at once. Otherwise it becomes like tahini soup, which you don't want. So you want to make it like a nice, uh, thin yogurt consistency, right? Or mayonnaise-like kind of consistency. So I keep on adding a little bit of water and keep on uh, stirring with a whisk or keep on whisking. Okay, the stir fry is done. I'm just gonna top it a little bit with the things that we prepared before. Uh, okay, so the dish is ready and I'm gonna serve it to the amazing team of the Waku Waku restaurant and I hope you all come and eat here because it's open from today, from tomorrow. From the 7th, 7th of March. 7th of March. 7th of March, you really yeah. have to come and eat here. Uh, and I'm serving it to the really amazing guys from this restaurant. I'm very excited. I really admire them. And I hope they will like it. I'm very yeah. curious. It looks good. It smells good. So it's been actually like a really great pleasure to cook with you, to cook for you here. It's been our pleasure to have you as well. You have to. It's makala, mm -hmm. everyone. Very light, tasty. Fresh. I love this. If you can eat this all summer long, you're gonna keep that summer body, baby. So guys, this was Waku's Kitchen together with Alexander. It's been my pleasure, our fellow colleague wow. in plant-based cooking. I, I love this so guy. Nice. I love this guy. <laughs> It's a love for food. You can see everybody's enjoying, smiling. There's some romance happening here. Um, tune in next time as well. Like, subscribe, donate, follow, whatever you wish like doing. Enough reason to keep checking us out. 
That was it. A lot of love from Marco's Kitchen. Yes, Ciao. <laughs> I love this ending. Really? High five that. Oh. Really